This is ABC 7 News at 11, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Good evening, I'm Healy Wilkes. Thank you for joining us tonight. Some parents in Sarasota County say they are outraged at the school district. They don't think the suspended principal of Venice High School should have been transferred to another position while still facing DUI charges. And tonight, Superintendent Lori White said even if Jack Turgeon is convicted, he will keep his job. ABC 7's Ray Collins has details in this exclusive interview. Ray. Haley, the case is still open, but Turgeon is no longer on leave. Last March, the Florida Highway Patrol charged Venice High School Principal Jack Turgeon with driving under the influence after they say he came over the Stickney Point Bridge late one Saturday night, lost control of his Jeep, and smacked into this light pole. The principal sustained serious injuries. He was rushed to the hospital where his blood alcohol level registered two and a half times the legal limit. Now, three months later, the investigation continues, but Turgeon has a job waiting for him. Superintendent Lori White has transferred him to the Suncoast Technical College. This is to an assistant director position, so it's not at the same level of leadership. Um, but I felt that I did not, I did not believe that termination was what was appropriate at this point. I think it's a terrible example uh, to all our young people. Sarasota parent Martin Hyde has four children, including two in the Sarasota school system. He says a school principal charged with DUI should be fired, not transferred. Now my 21-year-old was good friends with a group of boys who not more than a couple of months ago uh, got in a car, drunk, and three of them died. Um, and that is one of the main reasons why I feel that we should have our educators held to a higher standard. But Superintendent White says even if Turgeon is convicted of DUI, he'll still remain with the district. If it turns out the charges are true and he is guilty and convicted, would he still keep his job? Yes, he would. That is, is not my intent in balancing all factors. That was something I was looking at all those factors at this point. And so um, he would be allowed to continue in that role. Even if convicted? Correct. So while Turgeon goes to his new job in August, White has also transferred the Riverview High School principal, Eric Jackson, to Venice High School, which disappoints some of Jackson's teachers. We were very surprised that he was leaving after being here for just one year. I know he will be missed very much. And while Martin Hyde says he won't miss Lori White when she retires soon, the superintendent says she stands behind her decision involving Jack Turgeon. You understand why there's some surprise and confusion out there? No, I understand. So now the search is on for a new principal for Riverview High School, Haley. And Ray, what about that investigation by the Florida Highway Patrol? You know, we called twice today, still no response, and it's been three months since that one car crash on Stickney Point Road. Possibly more to come there. Thank you, Ray. We're seeing plenty of roads in the wake of Tropical Storm Colin on Anna Maria Island. Main streets were able to stay clear, but some residential streets on the island were still underwater today. And in Bradenton Beach, several sailboats docked near the historic pier came unhinged. A handful are capsized and four more were pushed into the pier, knocking out some pieces of walkway. The strong winds and heavy rain caused some minor damage to homes near the North Bridge on Siesta Key. Homeowners were picking up broken limbs, debris, and palm fronds today. Boats moored along the canal, however, made it through the storm without any damage. A couple of residents we spoke with today say that Colin actually did a little bit of positive for them. Storm came and pruned it pretty good. I mean, look, it saved me a lot of work. I woke up to a half of our tree in our driveway. And luckily, Tuesday is garbage pickup day. Timing was perfect. Mm -hmm. So I got my trusty chainsaw out, mm -hmm. chopped it up, and I'm dragging it out to the curb. And for more of a look at what we've been pace facing over the last 24 hours, let's head over to Bob and then look forward as well. Thanks, Hill. You know, another a positive or benefit uh, with Colin is the fact that our high fire danger has lowered considerably now as we had widespread rainfall over the area. And that's not to say that it won't go back up, but uh, nonetheless, when you get a widespread rain event like we saw, it really does help out on the uh, high fire danger aspect. We are seeing storms this evening. Uh, they are pushing off to the northeast and they have been popping up mainly across South Sarasota, although we've had some showers uh, north of uh, Sarasota as well. But right now, the only activity that I see that's uh, very 
fairly significant, and it's not much. Uh, top, uh, tops on these are only around 30,000 feet, and that would indicate some shower activity pushing off to the northeast, basically, and some showers down south to near Rotunda. Uh, that's what we're looking at right there. This just kind of popped up, though, and it continues to push off to the northeast, so Punta Gorda may see some of this rainfall here in a little bit. But all in all, it's fairly quiet tonight, but we expect a little bit more action to start to develop uh, before sunrise tomorrow. And uh, there is a flood watch. It's in effect until 8 o'clock. We could see an additional 2 to 4 inches of rain in areas, not the entire area, but in some areas uh, throughout the day on Wednesday. Rainfall for the past 12 hours, uh, an inch uh, near Siesta Key, just over that. And you can see some heavier showers near Lakewood Ranch, about 6 tenths of an inch. Not as much uh, in the last 12 hours in Manatee County, but earlier today, we did see some rainfall that was uh, fairly heavy uh, in northwest Bradenton, but also up into Pinellas County and Hillsborough. Four inches of rain fell there today. Well, now that Colin is leaving, well, we're looking at a system down to our south. Indications are we may see some of this moisture move back in our direction. Our indications are that we may even see a little low pressure area develop with it. We'll have details on that coming up in a few minutes. Haley. Thank you, Bob. Hillary Clinton is calling this a historic nomination for women. On the day residents of six states went out to vote, the former Secretary of State has surpassed the magic number to secure the Democratic nomination. She is the projected winner of tonight's primaries in New Jersey and New Mexico. This makes Clinton the first presumptive female nominee of a major political party. Nearly eight years to the day when she withdrew from the race to endorse then-Senator Barack Obama. Clinton spoke to a crowd of supporters just moments ago, while Donald Trump, meanwhile, continued to pick up more delegates of his own. Tonight's victory is not about one person. It belongs to generations of women and men who struggled and sacrificed and made this moment possible. I understand the responsibility of carrying the medal, and I will never, ever let you down. Bernie Sanders is set to speak at 1 a.m. He has said he will stay in the race through the Democratic Convention. And for more on tonight's developments, ABC News correspondent Elizabeth Herr joins us live from the Clinton campaign headquarters in Brooklyn, New York. Elizabeth, thanks for being with us. And first of all, a huge, exciting night for Hillary Clinton. And what is the feeling from the Clinton campaign after reaching this milestone? Well, Haley, let me quickly set the scene for you. As I'm sure you can hear in my background here, the party is still going on. Now, this is because Hillary Clinton wrapped up her victory speech about 20 minutes ago. But from what I can see, she is still here shaking hands and taking pictures with her supporters. Now, as far as looking ahead and after reaching this milestone, so what happens next? Well, the feeling that we got from her victory speech was that she was proud, grateful, but above all, calm. And hopefully you can hear me when I read you the end, the, the concluding line in her victory speech. She said that, quote, the end of the primaries is only the beginning of the work we have to do. Bottom line, one battle down, but she knows that war in November is looming, and she knows she has quite a challenge ahead. Haley? She does, and she even addressed Donald Trump directly in this speech. And what is the strategy to deal with Bernie Sanders if he does as he says and stays in the race? This is true, and to be clear, Senator Bernie Sanders has not yet conceded, and all day and all along he has maintained he is in this till the end, which is the convention next month in July, during which he says the superdelegates have the final say, and until they get their say, he's in this. However, depending on what happens tonight, he has hinted and said that Based on the outcome, he could reassess where his campaign stands, perhaps as early as tomorrow. But again, he hasn't conceded just yet. Haley, back to you. Thank you, Elizabeth Hur, live in Brooklyn, New York, for us tonight. Shifting gears, a carjacking suspect is in the hospital tonight after eluding authorities for hours and then shooting himself in the head. Bradenton police say Cody Morrison was taken to the hospital with a critical head wound. He shot himself on Vermont Avenue in North Bradenton. That's where police and Manatee County Sheriff's deputies had closed in on him. Police say Morrison did fire shots at them before shooting himself. Morrison is suspected of an armed carjacking at a Circle K in Bradenton this morning. The victim tried fighting him off and suffered some minor injuries. Morrison is also a suspect in recent carjackings in Bradenton, Sarasota and Palmetto.
Straight ahead, Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with the official Suncoast forecast. Plus, while some think millions of dollars washed away when Tropical Storm Colin hit Longboat Key's newly renourished beaches, some say the job did exactly what it was supposed to do. And a major murder trial on the Suncoast being brought up once again, a resentencing hearing for the man convicted of killing two British tourists in Sarasota. Across America with Mega Jackpots, it's Mega Millions. Hello America, I'm John Crow. It is Tuesday, June 7th, and tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is an estimated annuitized $260 million. To win that jackpot, you must match these five white balls plus that gold Mega Ball. Now, let's see if I can make you a millionaire tonight. Our first winning number tonight is 72. That's followed by 65. Up next, we have 51. Your next number is... 25 and your final white ball for this Tuesday evening is 48. Now for the Mega Ball. Tonight's Mega Ball number is 4. Again, tonight's winning numbers are 72, 65, 51, 25, 48, and the gold Mega Ball is 4. Now, if no one matches all six numbers Friday's jackpot could be $280 million. Good luck and play on, America. Need new windows? Buy direct from the factory. New South Window is having a sale. The more you buy, the more you save. Buy four windows, save 25%. Buy six windows, save 30%. Buy eight or more windows and save 35%. How? Because New South owns the factory and you cut out the middleman. Award-winning, energy-efficient windows and doors installed with a lifetime warranty. New South Windows are made in Florida for Florida homes by Florida workers. Visit NewSouthWindow.com or call now. Pomero Shop Furniture. After 66 years in Sarasota, we're still the leader in hard-to-find and custom-made furniture. We have literally thousands of fabrics and patterns to choose from, and our free in-home design consultation will help you create rooms in your home specific to your unique style. Our inventory changes daily, so come in today to see what's new. Plus, anything in our showroom can be part of your home the very next day. Pomero Shop Furniture, now with three locations. Trusco Bank has hometown checking, free mobile app, no monthly fees, and free use of over 55,000 ATMs worldwide. Are you happy with your bank? Go to TruscoBank.com for details. Your hometown bank, Trusco. Member FDIC. When you don't know who you are, you can be anyone you want to be. You're coming with me. Ooh, where are we going? To the most wondrous place in the world. No, story. People don't always live happily ever after, but we will. I'm Hetty Feather, and this is my story. Getting older shouldn't mean giving up all the things she loves to do. It should just mean, well, finding new ways to do them. Right at Home's professional team thoughtfully selects caregivers to provide help with personal care, housekeeping, and of course, meal preparation. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, and it tastes good too. <laughs> we can provide the right care right at home. They took that stress and that tension when I was particularly feeling very bad <laughs> after that nasty car accident, and it was such a relief to know that I didn't have to bear that burden alone, that I had help. Our goal is to not just get a, a satisfactory settlement on their case. We want them up on their feet, happy again. They've gotten their life back. ABC 7's Pump Patrol, a list of the Suncoast's cheapest gas on mysuncoast.com. An eventful 24, 48 hours around yeah. here with uh, Colin. Not as bad as it could have been. Right. We're happy That's about what I'm that. Thinking. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm thinking because uh, you think about it, Gabrielle knocking a power out in 2001 mm -hmm. to nearly uh, 300,000 wow. residents here on the Sun Coast. This one, you know, 10,000 mm -hmm. maybe. So, a uh, different fraction. story. Yeah. yeah, it's a different story. It was more of a coastal event, obviously. Mm -hmm. We've had a few inland uh, Doppler indicated tornadoes, but they weren't uh, actually confirmed. There was no damage Enough associated do damage, with them. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Uh, different than the cold front that moved down January 17th. You know, January 
17th, it was a different kind of uh, very cold air behind mm -hmm. and some warm air out in front. So these tornadoes are very small, very quick, and they're not as identifiable as uh, the ones right. that come down with cold fronts. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at uh, some nice weather, at least uh, tonight, uh, for the sunset. We had a few brief showers around. Viewer photo sent in from John Duncan, a nice uh, look there, perspective of the Venice Pier, just as the sun was getting ready to set. And you can see some cloudiness around there, and that's the result, again, of uh, the little system left behind, uh, if you will. A little line of low pressure left behind from Colin. Uh, another nice shot on the beach. So the waves are still big. You can see that off in the distance there with some folks surfing them. Uh, Cindy Des Desmond getting this, but kind of calm as far as the winds go. You can see the nice uh, tide pool there, just kind of smooth, calm with the reflectivity of the clouds. Well, the strongest winds, according to the National Weather Service, not confirmed yet, but uh, 54 Longboat Key, Sarasota Braden 53, and South Sarasota at 44. Pretty big storm, a low end tropical storm force winds there. As far as the rainfall estimates go, this is a look and a review of what's been happening in the last 48 hours. And you can see the area in pink there, up to nine inches of rain. That began around Sunday at, say, Sunday evening. So it doesn't take into account some of the rain we had earlier on Sunday morning. But nonetheless, that's where the heaviest rain fell. And most of that, at least half of it, came today with those uh, showers and storms that moved on shore this morning. That little line of low pressure kind of hung up there. Where will the line line up tomorrow? Well, it may be right across Sarasota. We're not exactly sure if it's going to be Northport or Sarasota or even uh, up possibly near Bradenton, but more likely down in South Sarasota County. As far as the Titan radar picture goes, some showers continue to push off to the northeast right now. Moderate to heavy rainfall. There hasn't been a whole lot of lightning strikes with this cell, but we saw one just about a half hour ago, and it continues to bring some uh, heavier rainfall near State Road 72 up to Sandy, and then uh, Clay Gully Road, some showers just to the east of there. And then notice this one little cell here in the last frame that's uh, just popped up in the last 10 minutes uh, just to the west of Venice. So we're going to see showers developing overnight. They should not be uh, anything too rough or too severe. We could hear some rumble of thunder. Well, Colin is gone. It's uh, actually a, a, a non-tropical in nature right now. It continues to move off to the east post-tropical storm Colin with a lot of moisture there. But look at this down here. Uh, some showers and some storms near the western tip of Cuba. A couple of uh, models are suggesting a very little low pressure area developing here in the southeast Gulf of Mexico. But regardless of what happens, we're going to see this moisture in our area. So we'll see showers and storms. Some of them could be heavy rainmakers like we saw today across the southern third of the peninsula of Florida. And that does include parts of our viewing area. 81 degrees right now. It is warm. It is muggy. And the winds are calm right now. The pressure is actually coming up, which is a good sign. 29.8. 8, 8 inches. The high today, 87 degrees, and the low, it was 77. That's way above average. 67 hundredths of an inch of rainfall uh, for today. That should be read higher. That does not read correctly there. We had over uh, four inches of rain at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. 74 in Jacksonville, 78 in Orlando, 81 now in Miami, and 80 in Key West. And temperatures along the coast, all into the low 80s tonight, so a warm and muggy night everywhere across the region. And as far as the future cast goes, notice this moisture encroaching. There's a little line here, if you will, across the peninsula, and there even appears to be a little spin right there. You can see that in this particular model, uh, kind of moving in our direction. Nothing developing as far as a uh, tropical system goes, but nonetheless enough uh, low pressure that it could kick off some heavier showers and storms right through, possibly even into Thursday, and then eventually takes off into the Atlantic and heads off to the east. So a little bit of unsettled weather, if you will, I think, over the next 36 hours, and then things start to calm down a bit. Temperatures around the states, uh, 58 degrees in Detroit right now. It's 66 in Boston, Minneapolis at 65, and Kansas City checking in at 68 degrees, Los Angeles at 61. As far as the tides go, the next uh, high tide will be at 572 and sunrise will be at 635. For boaters tomorrow, look for light chop on the bay and inland waters. There will be uh, higher winds and seas near some isolated showers and storms that move through, but seas running 1 to 2 feet, a southwest wind at 5 to 10 knots. Tomorrow uh, on the beach is a high near 86 degrees, water temperature at 84, and the UV index will be in the moderate category there. And mostly cloudy uh, overnight, some scattered showers, maybe some thunder showers, but not very severe weather at all not very strong storms, I should say. And uh, for tomorrow, variable cloudiness. We'll start off with showers and storms, though, around 87 degrees. Southwest winds at 10. We will see some breaks in those clouds. And the extended forecast, uh, Thursday, still a pretty good bet for some scattered storms. And then it tapers off just in time for the weekend with high temperatures close to seasonal averages, right around 90. Haley?
Thank you, Bob. Beaches were, of course, hit hard during the tropical storm. Longboat Key officials are assessing how much sand was lost on the beach, which is in the middle of a $20 million renourishment project. They were pleased that the new sand helped keep the beachfront condos out of harm's way. Volunteers from Anna Maria Island Turtle Watch, meanwhile, were out today checking on existing turtle nests and looking for some new ones. After a day of emotional testimony, we could get a decision tomorrow in the resentencing trial of Sean Tyson. Tyson was convicted and sentenced to life in prison in 2011 for killing British tourists James Cooper and James Cusaris. Both men were partying in downtown Sarasota and somehow wandered into a Newtown public housing complex where Tyson lived. Tyson, who was 16 at the time, shot both men and fled the scene. Today's hearing comes as the result of a 2012 Supreme Court ruling that states sentencing a juvenile to life in prison without the possibility of parole is considered cruel and unusual punishment. Freedom is a human right, but along with it comes a responsibility for your own actions. Therefore, it is our firm belief that for the safety of others, Mr. Tyson should never, never be released from prison. Based upon these principles enunciated by the United States Supreme Court, the very minimum that you could sentence him to is 40 years on each count. Court will reconvene tomorrow morning. The Florida Supreme Court is hearing arguments in a case on whether the new state death penalty law is constitutional. The court is looking into the case of Larry Darnell Perry, who was convicted in the 2013 murder of his infant son. The court is trying to clarify the murky situation surrounding a January U.S. Supreme Court ruling on issues surrounding the new state law. The law was quickly crafted by lawmakers in response to the ruling. It requires at least 10 of 12 jurors recommend death for the penalty to be imposed. Assistant Attorney General Carol Dittmar says that both prosecutors and defense attorneys need clarity. Until we get moving forward again and get a determination from this court as to what Hearst actually means, everything's just sort of up in the air, which is, is not a good solution for anybody. Of the 31 states with the death penalty, Florida is one of only three that do not require unanimous jury recommendations for death to be imposed. A special flyover in Pensacola today. Dozens gathered as the Navy's Blue Angels performed this flyover, transporting the body of Captain Jeff Cuss to their home base at Naval Air Station Pensacola. The Colorado native died last week after his plane went down in Tennessee. He had been practicing for a Blue Angel show when the accident happened. Happened. Cuss had been a member of the Blue Angels since 2014. He will be honored at a memorial ceremony on Thursday. A new sh study shows that Southwest Florida is in the midst of a nursing shortage. The Workforce Now study looks at careers in Southwest Florida with the smallest and largest gaps between supply and demand. Last year, nursing didn't even make the list. This year, it is number one. We spoke to health care professionals who say these shortages can stretch nurses very thin, but that they don't anticipate any decline in quality of care. It can be hard on the nurses, you know, because of decreased numbers, they have to work very hard. It's definitely a concern, but something that everybody is always looking towards to make sure that the quality does not suffer. Experts say one cause for this shortage could be Florida's fast increase in population. The site of Venice's new library will likely be the site of the old one. Sarasota County Commissioners unanimously approving the city of Venice's cultural campus as the site. That's where the Venice Community Center and former library are. The old library was closed earlier this year because of a persistent mold issue. All Faiths Food Bank was on the road this evening giving food to those in need. The organization's mobile food distribution delivers frozen meat and some other products as well as fresh produce, canned and dry goods on a daily basis. But on the first Tuesday of each month, they set up shop at Riverview High School in an effort to fight hunger. It's a mixed bag. Uh, it's, I'm glad we're here. It's unfortunate that it happens, but it happens everywhere. And, and it's, it's nice that we're here. And it's nice that we have the, a great group of volunteers that spend their time to come out here and help out as well. All Faiths provide services to families in Sarasota and DeSoto counties. Up next in sports, an update on tonight's Rays game, plus a preview of game four of the NBA Finals. But first, here's Jimmy Kimmel. Here is what awaits you tonight.
it's okay to trust me at this point because I've made so many good calls. I'm not a, I know it sounds crazy like I'm a lunatic, but. Yes. But. I mean, no. <laughs>
Game three tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. You can see it right here on ABC 7, which means this newscast will be delayed. That's a look at sports. We'll have tonight's winning lottery numbers straight ahead. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7, your Suncoast News. A trial of two drugs offers hope for lung cancer treatment in Health Smarts. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. Whether you're a homeowner looking for a professional installation or a contractor looking for top quality products, Sarasota Glass & Mirror can meet your every need. For 42 years, Sarasota Glass & Mirror has been the area's premier supplier and installer of quality glass products for your home or business. As an authorized PGT Wingard dealer, we know how to protect your home. With everything from the PGT Wingard impact resistant windows and doors to shower enclosures and decorative mirrors, the Sarasota Glass & Mirror team has the knowledge to tackle any project. The home at 14 Green Street. The showing. The butterflies. The papers. The crunching of numbers. The offer, the counter, the poker face, the impasse. Finding the happy place. The compromise. The closing of loopholes, the ironing of wrinkles, the signing, the shake, no, the hook. The sign of a Remax agent. Need a mortgage? Compare and save. Trusco Bank offers a variety of low-cost mortgages that are right for you with friendly personal service. That's made Trusco one of the area's top mortgage lenders. Visit TruscoBank.com for details. Your hometown bank, Trusco. Equal housing lender. Some juvenile osprey are receiving TLC from Wildlife Incorporated in Manatee County after being rescued during Tropical Storm Colin yesterday. As you can tell, they're a little wet. <laughs> Six osprey were rescued in total, and the three seen in these photos in particular were found after their nest was blown out of a tree. Wildlife Inc. says tonight they're all doing well, and they will try to re-nest the birds in the coming days as long as the parents are still around. And we're... Glad to report Sonny's okay. Yeah. We've seen him in the nest, or he or she in the nest today. And, and the nest well. held up pretty well. It those did. strong winds around town. Got and blown around a little yeah, bit, a little but not bit. much. Not, not too bad. We shouldn't get blown around too much tomorrow. Some heavy rain is still possible, though. Yeah, got to right. still pack the umbrella. Be aware of that. We'll see you tomorrow.